Hello everyone, I'm Eve Hunter Spade with Collective Chickadee, and this tutorial is part two of a mini series on constructing journal cover pieces. This technique that we're going to do today is the overlapping spine, and that is what you see in front of us right now. And with the overlapping spine, you may stitch your signatures either through the spine so you can see the stitches, or you can use the hidden stitch technique. And if you're unsure about that, or how to do that, I do have a tutorial in my archives that you can find. I love this technique for a few reasons. One, it gives me the opportunity to make the journal covers and the spine with my scraps, and I have a plethora of them that I've been collecting for years. Two, it gives my journals the wow factor. And lastly, it allows me to be creative, and I love it when ideas start exploding while I'm working on projects that lead to other projects, and you might see that take place during this video. Before we get started, I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you are not already a subscriber, I would love to invite you to do so. And as always, all questions and comments are welcome. My goal in making videos is to share the love of creativity, to teach, and to inspire others, so I hope I can do that. And with that said, I guess we should just get started. I have 10 journals and a few extra spines and different levels of completion just to hurry along the process of this tutorial. So. Before we construct a journal, I'd like to show you just what the overlapping spine looks like. Here's a journal cover, no guts in it at all. So what I had done on the insides was just use a spare piece of file folder and then I made the spine to overlap that. And if this looks familiar, it's because of the Mountain Girl Studio, Angie. She's my neighbor, it lives down the road and just over the pass. So this is just one of the projects that you're gonna see that I used her digital downloads, but isn't that just beautiful how they work together? And then the next I'm gonna show you, you can see the overlapping spine it's just a simple journal. So as I said, I have journals over here at different stages of being put together. I already have my cardstock cut to size and inked. I have my decorative paper that I've already did the messy stitching and I always do it this way. That way, <laughs> there is a reason for my madness. That way when I stitch it in, I don't have to worry about hiding the stitch on this side, and maybe it's not a big issue. Um, it's just easier for me, and also it saves my needles from getting dull. So this is a really thin copy paper that I printed this image on, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put this where it needs to be. And I'll speed up the process so you don't have to watch too much. I've already prepared my spine by using this Martha Stewart punch. All I need to do is ink it up and score it and I will go ahead and get that prepared. I just want to ink the edges so it stands out a little bit more. I love this punch. It does kind of look Western, but it's funny how if you put it on something floral or, um, it just goes with anything. But it's amazing how, like I said, you put this with a Western theme and it looks like it just fits. All right, well, let's go ahead and get my scoring line. And what I'm going to do is just see where the center is. And I want to leave room for attaching to the cover. So I'm just going to head and scoot this over. I'm going to do the same thing. Try to just find the same distance here. All 
right, I'm just going to go ahead and attach that on my cover. And I like to use both double side tape and then also glue. Let me go ahead and put this on here. And like I said, I like to use a little bit of glue just to put on the edges here so it will attach to my cover a little better. And this is how I do it. I'm sure there's other techniques. I should probably clip these little strings, me. little stitching. Now that I've got the edges lined up, and that's butt to the butt to the fold of my crease that I created there, I'm just going to fold that over and apply pressure. And that one is going to be done. I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side. And for me to not get mixed up what is the top and bottom, when I do the messy stitching, I never stitch where it's going to be covered. It saves me on the stitching, saves me on the time, and also it saves me from putting <laughs> the cover upside down, which I still might stitch my signatures upside down, but at least that is an easy fix versus all this gluing and sewing. So, I probably learned that by doing a few times. <laughs> you learn by your mistakes. At least I do. Alright, so once again, I'm just going to line this up to the crease and make sure that the ends are together. And I'm just going to fold that right over and apply pressure. And that's going to not just make that adhesive stick, but also the glue that I put down. And let me put the top of my glue in. All right. And then from there, I like to ink the creases, give them that distressed look. I think I need a little more ink here. So there we have it. Here's one of the overlapping spines and it just makes it pretty. Uh, you can now stitch on the outside or you can do the hidden stitch and if you're not sure what a hidden stitch is in my archives I do have a video of how to do those but I Love how the stitch on the outside of these. Like I said, there's only two signatures in this one. So that is like good to go here. So I already have two signatures ready. Tea dyed paper. All I need to do is stitch them in and then pimp out the journal. So just like that, we have a journal made already. So let's go ahead and continue because I have others to show you. And like I said, I have them all in different stages here. So with this one, I've already did the messy stitching, attached it to the cover, and I've also done the inside pocket. So that is already ready. The back page, I, instead of doing a pocket, I decided to add this little journaling notebook. I put magnets in here, so it, oops, <laughs> magnet, <laughs> there it goes, it snaps right in. I don't know if you can hear that. And I made it so it would match up, so the horns 
the designs would just match up right where they're where they at. So it's just the same as the one I just did prior. The only thing I need to do is add my spine and I wasn't sure if I should go ahead and just do the spine with the two signatures or if I should actually make this one a little bit bigger. And I think that is exactly what I'm going to do. So this one, yeah, all I need to do is add the cover. So if you want to watch that process again, I will speed it up just so you know. Isn't that just a beautiful, stunning effect? All right, need to add the guts. Okay, so the next two journals I'm gonna make, I'm gonna be using the Mountain Girl Studio downloads and also the Tim Holtz Moose. And this was the other journal that I had made for our friends. I've already, use the die cut and I am just going to inlay the mousse in the die cut and if you don't know what I'm talking about I do have a video of how I inlay die cuts and I like to do that just so it doesn't have anything to catch on especially when it's on your journal cover I'm just gonna place that in there and then just back it up with tape just to secure it in place. And then I am going to be reinforcing. So this isn't gonna be seen at all. But there is a reason for my madness. It truly is, just so there's nothing to be caught when it's on the front cover because that is the part that's being handled by fingertips at times. And this die cut is super easy to do with it because there's not a whole bunch of little pieces. It's just one solid piece. Isn't that stunning with this dark piece of paper? All right, so what I need to do is go ahead and trim this with my Martha Stewart punch. And I do try to get as straight as possible this um, Tim Holtz board with all these lines makes it pretty easy to achieve. If you see some of the glue that pokes out on the side, you can just grab your pokey tool, just kind of scrape it off. There we go, another spine. I am going to show you how I like to reinforce the covers. All 
I'll probably just cut the corners off just a little bit so they're not so pointy. That's my own little preference here. So with that, So what I like to do, since I love this paper line, I have already made the signatures that will go in here and using them as the cover. And it's just four pages in here. And once again, once I um, attach them, I might actually have three signatures in this one. Um, I will pimp them out. but. As you can see, that cover is already complete. So let's go ahead and do another, and I'm gonna use the same decorative edge. I do wanna make one more of Mountain Girl Studios, so um, I'm just gonna rush through this little process, but it's gonna be the same thing. All right, here's the other one completed. All I need to do is put some decorative paper in there and I do already have some signatures with that beautiful Mountain Girl Studio papers. And I just need to pimp these out after I stitch them in. So those are the two that we completed of this style. I'm going to switch it up to a different theme and I'm also going to use a different edge punch. This is another Martha Stewart punch. And look how cute that looks. So this is what I'm going to use. I already have this journal stitched and backed with some decorative paper and cardstock. All I need to do is adhere that spine onto the page and I think I'm just going to use glue this time which I hope I can do it fast enough the reason I don't want to use my double sided tape is that these flower punches are pretty big and you know the double sided tape something could stick on the other side to it so that's why I thought glue would probably be the safest bet but that will require me to do this kind of quickly. I love, love, love how that turned out. So I won't need to reinforce the cover because I used a heavy cardstock on the decorative paper, behind the decorative paper. So that's going to be sturdy enough, but I am going to get to decorate it. Um, yeah, I could easily throw a little deer on here. So my daughter has a friend that is going to have a little baby boy, and I thought this would just be so cute for her. A little bear, maybe a little bunny bunny. I don't know. I have time to play around with that, but at least the cover is made and I also already have the signatures ready. Just used from the same paper line for the signatures and just regular tea dyed paper and I just need to totally pimp that out. And I made it so there should be lots of room to get this good fat and chunky. Oh yes, 
plenty. But another cute overlapping spine. Give you an idea of all the possibilities out there. Okay, what else do I have to show you? Let me check. I want to also show you some other options if you don't have any edge punches and I want you to have to go out to get edge punches. But if you have any embossing folders, they can make some beautiful, beautiful spines. So I have a few here. Uh, once you emboss it, just score it. You will have to reinforce it. I'd probably do a hidden spine instead of sewing through the pretty decorative side. But look how beautiful this looks. That is going to be just stunning. So that's an option. In the previous videos that I've showed using this embossing folder as a spine, this is one of my favorite ones I have. Just Look how stunning that is. So that is an option. Also, if you have any die cuts, I have one here that I can show you. I already have it cut down and stitched. Do I have a front or a back? And here is, what die cut did I use? Let me check. Here, I use spell binders, and it's this, this die cut here. And I've already scored it. I don't know if you can see the score line there. And I think I'm going to alter this a little bit. I think I don't need these corners, and maybe I can actually use it on the cover. Let's give it a go and, and see. Ooh, I think so. Yeah, I think that's going to work. So let me go ahead and cut these other ones off. I think I also want to cut, I don't know if you can see that edge, I think I'm just going to round that one off. It's just kind of fun to play around to make things look a little different. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and crease the spine. I don't really like that. So I think what I'm going to do is also use my di my um, cutter and cut this this line off so it's a straight edge. I think that's going to look better. Let me check it out. So I just cut off on both sides this little piece. And I do like that already better. But I'm going to go ahead and round this edge I think. All right I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. <laughs> I tried to use the crocodile chopper there but it didn't line up the way I needed it to line up so let's go ahead and adhere this where it needs to be. Alright, I'm just going to make sure I line it up the way I want it. And flip it over so I can take the double side tape off. And I am going to use a little bit of glue as well on those edges that I don't have the double side tape on. I wonder, do I want to use this? Look how pretty that is. I guess I should show you. 
that's really pretty. I think I will do where I sew the signatures in, showing the stitches on the outside. I think that would look really pretty. I kind of think I need to utilize All right, that one's done. I will have to reinforce the spine. But I can do that later, but here's another one. Check that off our list. Okay, the next one I want to show you, just because it's another alternative, if you don't have any edge punches, you don't have any die cuts, you can just use a piece of decorative paper. So I have this already done here. So this is the back and this is the front. It's not reinforced or decorated on the inside yet, but what I did was grab one of my decorative papers I have already printed out and I am going to score it and place it on here. And I'm gonna make it so it's not even. I don't want the spine and the edges to be the same because I really like this design of this uh, bull skull. I almost said bison skull. So I want that to be the spine, on the spine. So I kinda of need to measure, kinda of guesstimate. Is that going to be enough to hold? All right. You just kind of guesstimate where I want that score line. Oh, that pencil's not working. Somewhere right here. I think you're going to like the effect that the back cover looks different than the front. It's going to have that beautiful image on the back. Here it is. Isn't that cute? So you don't need any fancy punches or die cuts. You can literally just use a piece of decorative paper or cardstock. So all I have to do here is reinforce the cover and the spine before I put my signatures in there. I just showed you how you can make an overlapping spine with just regular paper. And if you even have just a plain circle punch, look how cute this is. If you are like me and you have tons of scraps, you can put those together like a collage these are just a whole bunch of little pieces of scraps. Same color, kind of from the same color wheel, I guess. But look how stinking cute that is. And all I did was layer little pieces and then scored it. So, there you go. And here's another one I did. And after I glued them together, I ran it through an embossing folder. A Tim Holtz embossing folder. Isn't that super cool? So, yeah, that's what that is going to look like. And I do have, I mean, I can show you just how simple it is. What I do is grab my scraps, ink the edges, 
I grab my little scoring board. Once again, I use these edges all the time to make sure everything is lined up. So I just need to figure out the size of journal cover I have so I know what size is spine and I literally just start okay, let me look at that again it is right before the five and a half so literally all I do is start lining up pieces of scrap paper Should I go ahead and glue that? Maybe I will. And just start, that's the width I need, or the length I need. So then you just start kind of playing. Just add little pieces here and there. I'm gonna use that edge to make sure it's straight. I don't know. Something like that. Problem <laughs> two. If I wanted to, I could run it through a different embossing folder or just leave it as is, but score it after it dries and yeah. So use those scraps. That's kind of fun. Okay, so I'm looking around, seeing what else I wanted to show you. It looks like I have a couple things here. I had made another... I had made another journal cover where I inlaid the die cut with this little bird here. And so, of course, I had to make two so I could get the two different colors. So this will probably end up being a tag for... Oh, or it could be another journal cover. Yeah, I haven't decided. Anywho, just another overlay, just another overlapping spine that has an interesting spine. Isn't that pretty? I just need to reconsider that, but look how fat that's going to be. That is going to be a, a lot of signatures or a lot of work to, to fill it up, but super cute. And then, um, here's another little digital download that I thought would just be a beautiful spine for a journal. And um, I kind of like the idea that I backed it up on some cardstock. So it's not bendable, but how pretty would that be? I think I'd make it so it's shorter in the front so I have some room to design. How about that? And having part of the butterfly going around the spine. Can you visualize that? Oh crap, maybe I just need to do it. Okay. Why I have so many projects started. Oh my gosh, how far do I want that? All right, that is
Yep. This is going to be really cool. I need to do some stitching. I need to stitch around here. Okay, I so saw I'm laughing at myself. Because this is why I have so many projects on my plate. If you have an idea, you just feel like you need to do it. Otherwise, it's going to slip your mind. At least it slips my mind. So, this will be super cute. Alright, so we have this. I like that the spine is actually smaller, shorter than the book plate. So, um, I just feel like, gosh. Hmm. I almost feel like I need to stitch this, but maybe I'll just do a couple little hand stitching. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Let me go ahead and attach this the way it is. Make sure it's centered. Well, let me go ahead and put the adhesives on at least. Get that part done first. Cute. Like I said, I kind of like this butterfly. If it would wrap around. But I wonder if I should glue the signet. Yeah, I'm going to stitch the signature so you can see the spine. And then I'm going to glue that over the stitches. I think that is what's going to look really cool. Hmm. What also is going to be cool, let me show you, since the spine is smaller, shorter than the cover, look how pretty it's going to be having the signature showing. I'm pretty excited about that. All right, so I will definitely pimp this out in front of you guys and finish it up. Um, all right, well, I guess this is it for now. That's a lot. <laughs> and I'm so excited that I got to share this with you and finally get to be here. I do have... Um, another video planned and I'm not sure if I'll do it today or tomorrow but it's going to be kind of on the same lines of overlapping spine but a little twist to it so if you're liking this video if you have any questions please reach out to me and tell me and ask me because um, yeah it just I'm here to make things easier or I, I probably confuse you a little bit but I hope that isn't the case. I just hope that you enjoyed these projects. And I think what I'll do is go ahead and kind of lay out everything that we did today. Let me place this. Scoot this out just so you have an idea of everything that we did. So we made... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, 
journals with a couple extra ideas of how you can use the overlapping spines. And I am just so happy that you joined me. And like I said, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. And I am going to do videos of each of these of how I design the insights. Until next time, warmest of wishes. Bye.